Hey everybody, uh, I'm inside my house today uh, because it is 50 degrees outside and I don't want to be out there. Uh, just wanted to, you know, update on the truck. Uh, on the truck, I've got all my wiring done, I've got all my lights mounted, I've got all the lights wired up and sealed. So now I have the forward facing lights as well as the back and side lights. Absolutely fantastic love doing it uh, I just wanted to touch base on a few things uh, such as how I did it now for the front tr truck light right on the hood that was a little bit uh, a little bit more involved because I had to mount the light brackets drill a hole through the hood run the wires into the hood and because of the way the hoods built you have that X frame inside where it's hollow and then it has the hollow side rails. Ran the wires through the side rails, connected it up to a 10 foot extension for the nylites, down through the subframe, underneath the vehicle, up through a hole in the floor. Now this truck, the, the 1990s, you know, these, these F-250s and F-150s, they're built where they have little drain plugs that are inside the vehicle. You just take that out, push it up through the carpet. It comes up right next to the side frame of the plastic uh, frame next to the seat. Ran the lines right through there. Now all my, my lights and everything, uh, front and back, all came through the, the bed. Instead of having it mounted inside the, the engine bay, you know, where it can have all kinds of issues, my fuses, my relays, my wires, my switches, everything is inside the cab. Uh, the fuses and relays are underneath the driver's seat. Nice and safe. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, the way I did that was I used the KNFRXO six-way fuse block. It's 12 and 24 volt. You can use uh, five volt the fuses or five amp fuses all the way up to like a 30 amp fuse the reason why I went with you know that is because it is six ways you you've got you you put your ground on top positive on the bottom then you have six wires for the top which are your grounds and then the, the three on each side which are your positive now the way I hooked it up was I took out the ashtray. You know, smoking is bad for you. I quit smoking a while ago. So I don't have any reason to have an ashtray. So I removed the ashtray, pulled off the wires for the, the cigarette lighter, and I wired directly to the cigarette lighter. That's a 30 amp fuse underneath the dash, runs over. I pulled the fuse out, removed the wires. I wired it up directly to those wires. Now my six-way block is now wired to those wires. Plugged it back in. Now I have a 30 amp fuse coming directly from, from the battery to that fuse, from the fuse to the fuse box. Now I've got inline fuse. I've got a fuse here and a fuse here. Now from there, I wired up all my lights and accessories. I uh, hooked up the Nylite 4-in-1 on off charger socket with voltmeter you got an on off switch it tells you your battery uh, per, uh, voltage absolutely amazing lights up you know when it's on because it turns on a light you flick on the light your voltmeter shows and it turns on and off your usb power plugs and you also have a 12 volt socket if you need that still absolutely great you know, I've tested it with my uh, inverter. It's a single plug inverter with two other 12 volt sockets and USB sockets. I've tested it with that. It will run uh, 800 uh, watt item easy and it doesn't blow any of the fuses. So not only do I have a 30 amp fuse, I have inline fuses for that specific device. Now it goes from 30 amp to the fuse box up to that switch which I put in another 30 amp fuse so I have 30 amps and 30 amps but 
for my lights, because of the inline fuse on the lights is 20 amps, I also use 20 amps in those spots. Because the six-way fuse block has six spots for six separate fuses. That way you don't have, you know, 30 amps and then it goes to another 30 amp or a five amp. You know, you can choose what you want for that specific line. So each light has an inline fuse a fuse block and then a 30 amp fuse. So anywhere along that line, if something were to happen, God forbid, the fuse will blow. Now the fuse block itself has a light. So if a fuse burns out or goes bad at either on the line or at the fuse block, it turns on a light. So I can know exactly which fuse needs to be pulled because it went bad. That's great. Now, when I ran these through the frame, across the frame, everything, it made it so much easier. Instead of, you know, running it through the engine bay and then having to push something through the firewall, because the night lights, they are amazing lights. It's just the plug wire for the switch is rather short. Uh, I mean, you, you only have, I think it's like eight foot or something like that. So, you know, you got to hook up to the battery. Then you have to come to the firewall, go through the firewall, then hook up your switches. I didn't want to do that because there's too much stuff going through the firewall and it's an older vehicle. So they don't have all those, you know, holes for this, that, and another. It's just a hassle. So all I did was go through the floor where the drain plug was so everything's in the back seat behind me runs up underneath the front seat in the center underneath the center console that i have and i made my own dash mount so now i have my switches i've got my light switches everything's right there ready to go made it so much easier now Will it work for you? Probably, you know, it all depends on, on you. That's on you. But, you know, if you want to add, you know, all kinds of stuff, you want to add lights inside your vehicle, you want to add, you know, anything you really, get yourself one of these. Even the fuse block. You can power this fuse block with a 12-volt plug. Say, so, like, if you don't want to, you know, run wire, solder wire, you know, shrink wrap wire and whatnot, get yourself a 12 volt plug with a pigtail. Wire the pigtail to the 12 volt, or the 12 volt, 24 volt fuse block. Then you can just run all your wires off of that and you could just have on off switches right there. I mean, what's stopping you from building a small little box and running wires through that? Then you, if you have an issue, you can just unplug the 12 volt fuse block and away you go. Sell the vehicle in the future and then you can take all your stuff to the next vehicle. You know, all this stuff works amazing. Plus, having a, having a voltmeter, I mean, yeah, your, your battery gauge tells you, you know, whatever. It's, if it goes, oh, here's 8 volt and here's 18 volt, it's somewhere in between. This gives you an actual number. Like when, when I start up the truck, it tells me I have 14.7 volts. When I'm sitting there, no vehicle running, and I turn it on, I've got 12.8 uh, volts. So I know the battery's good. I can, I can flip a switch and know that my battery's good. I can drive down the road, turn it on, and see that my battery is charging absolute savior i mean you you do you know that your battery is charging do you know that you're actually getting a proper charge this this voltmeter doesn't just tell you hey your battery's good it also tells you if you're charging because it, if it's anything over the 12 volt meeting you know you've got you know 12 volt to 13 volt is right around where a 12 volt battery sits 
Anything over 13 volts, you know that your battery's charging. So that tells you right there ahead of time. So it's pre uh, pre maintenance checks and services PMCS. You know you know that your your alternator's working. You know your battery's working, and if it fluctuates, then you know your battery's going bad, or you need to check your alternator. That's easy. Now another thing that I got was the EWK flexible funnel. That's EWK. This thing is <laughs> amazing. It, you, it's just a, a piece of you know aluminum or whatever, and it's silicone coated. So you have this thing that you could just roll up, twist up, or even fold, and make a funnel out of. I did the the oil, and I did the uh, transmission fluid on the truck. I just made a nice tight V, and it comes up, and I did a U. I put it up into the dipstick. Just held it there with one hand and just poured the fluid. Fluid went right down. Nothing sticks to it because it's silicone. It's nice, it's easy. Fluid just drains right down. Once I was done with with the fluid, wiped it off with a paper towel. Shop rag, I use the blue ones. I mean, they're everywhere for us. <laughs> it's like we, we got rid of them. We got rid of like the standard paper towel and we're just using shop rags for everything. But shop rag wiped it off went over checked my oil had it nice nice and warmed up pulled my dipstick i was like okay i'll add a quart and, you know put it down same thing just i laid it right across my hoses it just sits there in a nice v you pour the fluid in and it goes it's an absolute great thing to have because it rolls into a little little burrito sized package and it's this huge funnel. It's huge. I mean, it it's great. You roll it up, stick it back in its box. It's just, I mean, hell. Uh, this can of PB Blaster is bigger than the funnel. The, the funnel is probably about 20% smaller than this. But, I mean... It's great to have. I mean, having something that you can, you know, put aside just in case. Like, behind my seats, I keep a whole kit. You know, tires, uh, oil, you know, fluids, uh, battery stuff. I got inflators. I've got emergency inflators and patch kits. I've got plug kits. If I get a nail in the tire, I can not only plug it, but I have an air tank little co2 canisters i get the the big big ones hook it up to it put it on the back on the tire turn the knob it empties the can i get about uh right a, the big big tubes of air i get around uh 28 to 30 psi on the on the truck tires absolutely absolutely amazed with them just hook it up and go Got a hole in the tire. I also have an air compressor in there, one of those 12 volt ones. I plug it in, air it up. Takes a little bit longer, but you get the full air up. I mean, just having things, you know, in your vehicle for emergencies is great. But all these things, hooking it up to the car, you know, got lights, I've got all the stuff. You know, just love building stuff. Oh, soon I'm going to be getting a new camera. Uh, I ordered one, so I'm just still waiting on them to uh, complete the processing and order because this is a custom camera. I'm getting a custom uh, full spectrum DSLR camera with lens to revert it back to a standard camera. So it'll look like this, you know, when I'm filming, you know, videos like this. But when I'm out doing paranormal investigations and stuff like that, I'll have full spectrum so I can record at night and pitch black and still be able to see. But that's a whole nother story. You know, I'm picking up all this other stuff. I've got a whole bunch of stuff on the way. I just wanted to do 
a nice little video, talk about a few things I've got done, and we'll see each other later.